Lanesfish is not only committed to supporting the self-hosted product suite for years to come, but in fact, we have significantly increased our investment into the development of our self-hosted product suite. We are very excited yeah. to give you a preview here today in this session, as well as throughout this conference, to show you the latest build of Lasefish 12. Lasefish 12 will be the biggest release of Lasefish since version 8, with innovative new features in virtually every product module. An administration hub, updates to forms such as a forms tester, a powerful new metadata view for repositories. Those are just some of the features that are in store for the initial release of Lasefish 12. But I'm guessing you all didn't come here to Las Vegas just to hear us talk about Lasefish 12. Please welcome Justin Pava, Director of Product Management, who is going to take us through a deep dive of Lasefish 12. All right, good morning, everyone. Who's ready to see Laserfish 12? So I am so excited to be able to show off some of our key features that we're bringing to you later this year for our next self-hosted version. These features are also going to be coming to Laserfish Cloud, so there should be something here for everyone to be excited about. So what you're seeing here is the new Laserfish web client with Laserfish 12. You may already notice some changes, but what I want to focus on today to start is repository metadata. So all that information in the right pane. There's a lot of good information there about the documents we're working on, this long, ever-expanding vertical list. But how would you like more control over that information and how it's displayed and how it's presented to people going and filling it out? For example, there's all that horizontal space. Why don't we take advantage of some of that? So I'm going to go on to the next document here, and you'll see the first update I've made using some of these new enhancements with repository metadata in Laserfish 12. You'll see I have fields side by side. I have field information displayed as tables so that instead of a long list of multi-value field groups, I can have the table information right there in front of people. I want to go a little further. Let's say I want to make it look a little more, you know, forms-like. Instead of a drop-down list, I want some radio buttons. For my multi-value fields, maybe a collection of checkboxes and the ability to put in other values, other options. Maybe I want to be able to hide information behind sections that are collapsible. So I only see it when I actually need to, to get the most pertinent information right in front at all times. This is already pretty good. I think we can do a little better. So for the next one, I'm going to focus on information to the person filling out the metadata information. Maybe put static text in that gives instructions how the information is supposed to be filled out so they don't have to go somewhere else to reference it. I can put information on, hey, here's some things, click this to expand it, okay? And also I can put in field rules so that certain fields will show or hide based on other values. So in this case, the renewal termination reason only shows up when I set a termination date. If I don't have a termination date, there's no reason to show it. So this gives you an idea of being able to really control how all the fields show and display when people are working with them. So that was one example I built. We've got another example here showing side by side with the document. So we've got our invoice on the left and on the right side we've got our GL code information about the invoice. So we can see all of that information right there ready to go in front, how you want it displayed. So how do you make these new templates? Well, any organization can build whatever templates they want in the web client repository management. So you have a drag drop designer that should look very familiar to those of you who have built forms, where you can put all the fields in and set up field rules all right for what makes the most sense for your organization. So 
Speaking of, speaking of forms, how many people, let's switch gears now, how many people have built a form? Okay, fair amount of people. How many people have accidentally spammed their manager while testing their form? Yeah, uh, sorry Michael, okay. <laughs> so it's very important when you're building a new process that you test it, of course, to make sure it's working. But it's also sometimes kind of cumbersome to either have to tell everyone, okay, you're gonna be getting a lot of emails, just ignore them, they're test emails. Or, okay, I'm gonna change everything about the process, put in my name, test it, and then hope I change everything back so that it's where it's supposed to be. So we wanna make this fundamental process smoother for everyone. So I'm gonna show you next some enhancements on just that. So in order to do that, first I'm gonna to go to forms. Well, where's my form server located? Um, well, actually, I don't need to know where my form server is located because I can go to the app picker in the upper corner, another new addition in LaserFish 12, and jump directly to forms. So I open up the process, and you'll note, oh, the first task, that's a manager approval. Okay, I don't wanna, I don't wanna send that to my manager while I'm testing. So what I'm gonna do is take advantage of the new test process mode, where it on runtime will change all of the information that assigns something to a user or sends an email and, and send it to me instead without changing the fundamental process itself. So how that looks, I'm gonna go ahead and fill it out. And this is, you know, this is a test form. It doesn't really matter what I put in, you know just so we go through and get the form filled out. And then when I submit it, you'll see it'll show up in my own inbox, even though that was the manager approval step, right? And when I go and I get the email and it's sent to me and it actually tells me, hey, this would have been sent to this other person, but because it's test mode, it's sent to you. And what's also really cool is it's flagged as test data. So when you go to monitor, the forms monitor information to view all of the process runs, it'll be set as test and you can easily filter that out of your actual production run. So you don't need to worry about the fact that your test data might be there in the reports about production runs. So we've got a couple more enhancements in that range but that's one of the key things we've got in LaserFish 12 to make that core part of building a process that's much simpler and smoother. So one more new thing I want to show and preview for you today, and it's something that we haven't shown yet, and it's the system overview from the app picker. And we go into that, and this is the first time we're showing this. This is the brand new administration hub. And this provides a single place to view information about your entire system. All the machines it's installed on, all the environments that are involved with your LaserFish uh, installation. You can see where the servers, form servers, workflow, et cetera, how they're all connected, and which environments that they interface with. And you can get information about all of these machines all from one place, jump to the configuration for all of them, and if you need to be involved in any sort of troubleshooting scenario, all the information you need, including all of the logs, is in one place, just to really, again, simplify that part of the process and give you a single place to view all of your information. So those three features are just the tip of the iceberg of what we've got planned for LaserFish 12. So here's just a list of a few additional items that you can expect to see. But LaserFish 12 isn't just about the new features. It's also about the training and the documentation that goes along with it. We have new interactive training and certification and training modules that will be ready to go alongside the release of LaserFish 12, as well as new approaches to documentation and best practice and deployment guides, all to help set all of you up for success for using all of the new capabilities in LaserFish 12. So LaserFish 12, will be coming this year in November. But you can check out everything I just showed you yourself in the Info Center at our LaserFish 12 preview booth. Try it out yourself, see what you think, get us some feedback as we continue to design and evolve all of this.